Okay, Dave Cave has an article, uh, Bus Coil uh, How To, in a February March issue of Gas Engine Magazine. He uses a GM LS2 ignition coil and a simple trigger circuit for a suitable suitable for a, a low constant RPM hit miss type engine. The spark timing would be fixed and after top dead center. But instead of just one spark, it puts out a burst of sparks. The LS2 is very small, includes the electronics that in earlier decades was in a separate box, and it cost only about $18. It uses, it's used in the GM vehicles from 1999 to 2007, and I think the part number is 12573190. I got to thinking about using the LS2 ignition coil triggered by an induction type of trigger that I've used for many years with a Chrysler control module. Most small engines have only two levels of spark advance. No spark from zero to a few hundred RPM, and then an advanced spark starting at an IPM, an RPM where they can, uh, where the engine won't kick back. This is simple, it's least expensive, but makes a compromise on timing. With the induction type trigger, we have an added level of spark advance for much easier starting. It provides a spark starting at about 100 RPM, maybe less. Uh, that's timed at top dead center, so, that, so it has no kickback. It is uh, easier on a battery and the starter motor. The GM PC2 crank sensor is an induction type coil. Uh, all of the Hall effect type coils would not be suitable for the RPM for a uh, controlled level of spark. I have several of the BC2s already, and uh, but some conditioning is required to have them work with the, uh, the LS2 ignition coil. The LS2 ignition coil is triggered by a signal from a computer. This signal is at zero volts until a five volt pulse comes along and triggers the spark. The PC2 crank trigger puts out a signal more like uh, an AC with a negative and positive pulses. The LS2 won't like the negative pulses, but this is easily fixed by routing the output from the PC2 through a bridge rectifier, like those used in converting the AC from a stator to a DC for charging the battery. This gives us a positive trigger pulse that is actually a doublet of two pulses. The induction coil PC2 has an output voltage that increases with the RPM, which we need for the RPM control of the spark timing. Voltage is much higher than volts, 5 volts would not be compatible with the LS2. So we just Clip the top off the trigger signal at 5.1 volts, which is above the trigger level of the LS2. Uh, this requires a 5.1 volt Zener diode. I'm using small components so I can fit them in the PC2 connector, but one could alternately use a small box as an alternative. Note that the trace number one uh, that time moves from the left to the right. What we see is the first set of pulses followed by one crankshaft revolution uh, uh, and then a second set of pulses. Each set starts with a doublet from the advanced spark and followed by a doublet for the top dead center spark. In both cases the these sparks are both above uh, threshold to fire a spark. Uh, you'll notice on trace two that I'm looking at the battery voltage, which is picking up the radio frequency interference for the actual spark firing. 
This is convenient that it tells us exactly when the spark fired, which is in the, in the middle of the doublet for each pulse. The, uh, the set of pulses on the left appears here to it's only fired on the advanced pulse, but the, the timing uh, of the oscilloscope may uh, obliterate the other one. The spark on the right, we can see that both the advanced and the top dead center uh, uh, trigger pins fired sparks. So the, the second spark off a TDC would, would not have any effect on a, a, a combustion mixture that's already ignited. The wiring is very uh, simple. There's two black wires. They both go to the ground at the, the mounting for the ignition coil and the, uh, the trigger coil. The red wire from the uh, ignition coil provides the power, 12 volt battery, and the green wire runs from the PS2 uh, trigger coil to provide the signal for the spark to the uh, LS2. So. The amount of air of spark advance is determined by the physical location of the trigger pin on the flywheel. To the best of my knowledge, the Tecumseh HH and OH series engines were the first to use the trigger pin concept for switching between levels of spark. On the, uh, the Onan NV engine uses this concept too, but with only one trigger pin since uh, I believe uh, the engine has compression release. If you're using a different engine, there is still room for the PC2. I'm working on an alternate bottom type trigger uh, like that, which I've used on a Briggs & Stratton uh, replacement ig ignition. That's a YouTube DE slash VSHKA XX9JY. The spark gap is still an open issue, and engines that the were used the LS2 ignition coil used a 60 thousandths air gap, which is about twice what the original HH120 air gap. Uh, I haven't done enough testing yet, but if you're having performance problems at, at high RPM, I think you may need a wider spark gap. I'm Ed Stoller, and if you have comments or inputs or something you want to share with the community as a whole, you can send me an email. That's strictly my name, Ed, E-D-S-T-O-L-L-E-R, at earthlink.net. Thank you. Well, in conclusion, the replacement ignition, the general information presented here, is intended to provide the common information for all the installations. Uh, it's also posted on my website, which is enginesandmagnets.com. Some of the installations are available already on YouTube. Uh, there's a Kohler K161 uh, with a Troy built installation, and Onan uh, NB uh, installation should be coming soon. Pete in Pennsylvania did that installation and I'm currently working on a Tecumseh HH120 for on an SS12 Sears tractor. Uh, so that's in work. But sometime in the future when I get around to it, uh, we'll try something on a Briggs & Stratton engine.